Okay, today my guest is Sawyer Torkelson, who is the senior captain goalie of the Park Rapids uh, Area High School hockey team. I should say it's Park Rapids, Walker, Akeley, Hackensack, Hackensack. Nevis, all the different areas. Um, so, uh, Sawyer, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Yeah. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. So, Sawyer, usually you're the youngest guest that I've had on the show so far. <laughs> so usually I go into a long background about, you know, what people have done for school and everything like that. But you're just kind of at the beginning of your life. So that's great. Number yeah. one, congratulations. You're, you. <laughs> you got a, you've got the world's your oyster. So, yeah. um, but did you grow up in Park Rapids? I did. Yep. Okay. I was uh, born and raised here. And who are your parents? Uh, Sherry Hinckley uh -huh. and Chris Torkelson. Okay. Uh, and so... You're um, obviously a hockey player. Yep. You're the you're the captain of the of the Park Rapids team. Yeah. And the goalie. Yep. When did you start playing hockey? Oh boy, it was. Uh, I think I threw the skates on when I was like three, four. Okay. Like right after I learned how to walk, pretty much. Who Who's the one that um, that got you to put the skates on? I would say it's probably my dad. Yeah. He. Uh, well, he's played hockey his whole life too. Oh, he did. And he was. Uh, yeah, he was really good in high school. Yeah. And uh, Where did he play high school? He played in Park Rapids. Yep. Yeah. And was he a goalie too? He was. Oh, he was? He was. Ah, yeah. okay. So there's a little hint as I was going to ask you about like how a person actually you know, becomes a goalie. You know, I think our stories, are, like mine and my dad's stories are a little bit different. Okay. Um, when I was like a squirt, we would like, well, I was actually probably before that, we would try, like everybody would play goalie for a different game. Yep. And everybody decided that I was the best goalie. And I, I didn't mind it, so yeah. I just stuck with it. And huh. now I play all the time. And so that was it. So it was sort of like uh, what, just the your teammates or the coaches or yep, just sort of everybody? Everybody. Said you're the best goalie, yep. and, and now you're a goalie. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> and, then I, and then I enjoyed it. So. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's kind of funny, too, to think because, you know, a lot of times – uh, well, I guess depending on the different styles of goaltending and all that, but um, the goal is usually a bigger guy. Yeah. Yep. Usually. So, so they were able to 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 see that probably by looking at your at your dad when you yeah. were younger to say, okay, well he'll probably have the size yeah. for it. But and then in the time I was still you know the biggest kid on the team. Yeah. Which helped, but. Which isn't to say that you have to be, you know, huge or anything. Like, right. But it but it definitely helps. It definitely does. <laughs> it does. Um, do you ever see Dominic Hasek play? I don't, goal? I don't think so. Yeah. He was uh he was the goalie for the Buffalo Sabres um in the probably his heyday was like in the 90s and stuff like okay. that. And he was real small, but uh he kind of he was one of the early sort of pioneers of the of the butterfly style oh, yeah. goaltending and all that. Yep. If you ever watch his tape, you'll see, but he was a dominant goalie even though his team was never very good. They never had much around him, but right. um as far as offense goes, but he was a smaller guy. But aside from that, I mean, I'm just trying to think of like, you know, goalies and stuff. I mean, you know, all time like uh, well, you probably haven't followed hockey. I know you haven't as long yeah. as I have, but you know, just thinking back to guys like like uh, Patrick Waugh, Marty Berdur, yeah. big guys yeah. this is sort of the stereotype, and um, even like in today's game, when you think of uh, the goalies being uh, like Hellebuck from um, Winnipeg and some of the other, uh, you know, NHL goalies are usually a bigger guy, so it d definitely helps. It right? does, yeah, yeah, it does. And then I don't know, there's probably. Five six years ago, where the NHL was actually looking for smaller, faster goalies. Yeah, and then that it's coming back to being bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just being a bigger goalie, I guess. Yeah. So, um, I mean, ideally, the goalie would be big, but then he would also be fast and flexible and yeah. everything like that. Too. Absolutely. So, do you do any sort of um, you know kind of flexibility exercises um, or what's your what's your training regimen like uh well in the summer on wednesdays i would uh always go to a yoga class okay mm -hmm. and then that would definitely stretch me out and stuff yeah um <laughs> uh, like the downward dog yeah, and all that yeah there's a lot of different stuff i'd do it for probably an hour hour and a half a day really yep yeah on wednesdays so and then other than that just weight room and kind of stuff okay uh, can you do the splits? <laughs> uh, not on demand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not thinking about it, I can. Yeah. You can, yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I suppose it really helps to be able it to does. do that if you're playing goalie. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what else about being a goalie? You know, I guess when you were coming up, 
you, you know, I mean, they said, oh, you're you're the best goalie. So, um, but you must have liked it. And so, I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, what 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 about that position? Do you like? Uh, I don't even know. You're just you're always in the play. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of selfish, but you're just. Uh, I don't even know. You're kind of unique, just, right? Yeah, you got to be unique. <laughs> and it, uh, I don't know. They say sometimes that the goalie is supposed to be like the best skater on the team. Yeah. Do you think that's true? Uh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know I could beat quite a few people in a race on the team. Could you? Yeah. <laughs> and then other than that, yeah. Yeah. Do you... Uh, um, do you face... You must face your teammates a lot in practice and stuff like that and... Um, you know, when they're doing their breakaway drills or whatever the other drills are. Who would you say on your team has the best, like, you know, uh, what shootout move or, or one on one move? Uh, I don't know. That'd probably have to go to either uh, <laughs> Kale Ravnus or Jaron Pinanimi. Yep. They're, and, yeah. They're pretty good with their hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really shifty, really. And yeah. Jaron's a senior, I think, yep. right? Yep. Um, but. He'll be around next year. Yep, he's a junior this year. He's a junior. Okay, all right, good. So, so he'll be the one to be the big scoring threat next yeah, year, hopefully. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so you named a couple of guys on this team. Um, there's uh, there, this team is very senior heavy, I think, too. Yeah, right? we there's have quite a few. Twelve, I think it is. Yeah, twelve seniors. So, of those twelve, how many of them had you been play? Were you playing with, you know, back in squirts when they made you Ooh. goalie? <laughs> uh, nah, eight, nine. Yeah, I think we have one or two Walker seniors, and I never got to play with them throughout the years. So, probably about nine or ten. So, Walker's got their own youth program. Yep. 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 But is Monaghan Park Rapids combined? Yep, all the way through. Okay. Which okay. is which is great. Yeah. So you must have developed some pretty good friendships with the guys on your team that will probably last you for, for a lifetime, a lifetime yeah, right? Absolutely. So, um, uh, you know, um, I think, is there another captain on the team or is it just you? Oh, uh, we got Connor Hansen uh-huh. and Parker Vingy. And Parker, they're all, so you guys, you're all three captains yep. of the team. Okay. Yep. Um, so what have you learned from, from these other players, you know, as you've come up and, you know, like just how have you, how have you guys kind of helped strengthen each other as, as players and young men? Um, it's <laughs> hanging out with each other, I guess, yeah. you know, you get to learn who each other is and mm-hmm. what's good and what's bad. And yeah, I just. I don't know. <laughs> well, you develop some synergy probably with yeah. them too. I mean, especially if they're line mates and all yeah. that too. Yeah. But I mean, even just like stuff where you're playing the puck, yep. if they, it's been going on for years, yep. they kind of know what you're thinking and you develop that sort of. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, you know, playing all the way through with these guys, it definitely helps to make more uh, com- bonding. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, yeah, I don't, I can't think of the word. Yeah, camaraderie. Uh, yeah. Yep. Team, teamwork. Yep. So, um, now I, when I was playing hockey, when I grew up, I only played through Bantams, but I did, um, we, you know, there was like the traveling team and then, you know, there were like three different levels of, there was like the A's, the B's and the B1, B2 and all yep. that. Um, do they have that here or is it yeah, more, they, they do. do. Okay. When, uh, when I was coming through, we were always a B1 team, Okay. but we didn't have enough kids for multiple teams. Oh. So we were just one team that was B1. Like now our squirts, there's two or three teams. Mm-hmm. And there's a B1, a B2, and I think we have an A team, but I'm not for sure on that. Okay, so the so the, the high school, or not the high school league, but whatever the Minnesota hockey determines whether or not a particular program can have an A team based on the number of participants, basically? Kind of, yeah. Well, you kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's how that worked. Okay. But then... Um, the number of teams you have depends on the number of kids, obviously. But and who are the who are some of the teams that you guys would routinely play? Like like you know, I grew up in Stillwater. We'd always be playing like you know Forest Lake or South St. Paul or White Bear, but yeah. places like that. Like who are the teams that you guys usually? We play? would play like uh, Alexandria or Breezy Point. They're called the Northern Lights. Mm-hmm. Um, Moorhead, DL, yeah, uh, Walker, yep. Um, so you run it, you're running into Moorhead at, at that level. Yep. Um, that's got to be pretty tough given that the yep. size of their program. Yeah, right? they were always really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now it seems like in high school, you're, you guys are always coming into, um, you know, face war road and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's also kind of a daunting. It is because 
we don't play that skill level throughout the season, mm-hmm. which really sucks. But then we go play the skill level in playoffs. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's but. tough to get used to it. Yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, which isn't to say that you can't beat them because you you certainly could. Exactly. <laughs> this year we got the we got the crew that we can beat them. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, you got to get through uh, Kitson, Kitson first, County right? County Central, yeah. and that's on Tuesday. Yep. Have you guys played them already? I yep. think Twice. We played them twice. Beat yep. them eight to two and six to two. Eight to two and six to two. Okay. Yep. So you can't look past them, obviously. No. Nope. They can. They can still <laughs> score. <laughs> um, and uh, that game's going to be at uh, at Ted O. Johnson Arena on Tuesday. Is it at six or at six? At six. It's yep. an early start. Yep. Because right? those guys are coming from. Uh, Hallock. Hallock, yeah, yeah, which is, that's pretty far. Isn't yeah, it? that's three and a half. Three and, three and a half. Three and a half, four. So you 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 guys have to make trips like that. Yeah. So give me an example, like, when you're going up to going up there during the week, like, you say you got a game up there in Hallock and, you know, on a Tuesday night. What does your school day look like and, you know, and then what's the trip back? Uh, well, the school day is pretty... At pretty average, you just go to school and then everybody gets out of school a little early. Yeah, goes and gets some food. Yeah, then we all get on the bus and there's the we call ourselves the back six. Uh huh. And we play uh, <laughs> crazy eights for like, oh, two hours. Is that right? Yeah, and then <laughs> other kids will sleep on the bus and play on their phones and stuff. Who else is in the back six? Uh, me, uh-huh. Connor Hansen, yeah, Braden Stewart, yeah, Reed Sharp, yeah, Parker Vingy, yeah, and uh. Quinn Hoshide. Okay, so that's the that's the senior crew there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are back there playing. So you usually eat your meal before you get on the yeah. bus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a team meal? Nope. You uh, got a so Domino's is actually so our assistant coach runs Domino's. Oh. So he gives us a fifty percent off discount on game days. Wow. Which is really sweet. Yeah. So then usually yeah. everybody goes and gets some Domino's and yeah. either goes to the rink and packs their bag and, uh-huh. and then eats Domino's in the locker room or. Yeah, just eat it in your car or something. Do you, so so a lot of, but you guys are on a bus, obviously. Yep. Right? Yeah. Um, so is there any other kind of like pregame routine that you have aside from eating Domino's? Or? Um, no, just crazy eights, and then always a half hour before I just put my ear, uh, AirPods in. Yep. And don't play on my phone. I just think about the game and then all that kind of stuff. Yep. You don't, uh, so you're concentrating at that yep. point. Yeah. What, what music are you playing on there? Oh, uh, it's a range of things. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking in classical or, uh, uh sometimes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, are you, so are you a music fan then too? Uh, not really. Yeah. I kind of just listen to yeah. whatever, I guess. Just kind of just get yourself in the, in the proper mindset. Yep. You do any kind of breathing exercises? I or? do not. You, you, I've, you, I've heard of kids doing that, but I don't. Visualizing sort yeah. of the game and yeah. things like that that are about to come up? Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Coach Bill Moore. So he came in, um, was it like last year was his first year or, oh, or two years? This is his third or fourth year. Okay. He came in my... Freshman year, I want to say. Oh, so he he's been he's your been coach the whole time, almost the whole time. I had one year with uh, Derek Ricky. Yeah, Derek yep. Ricky. Yeah, the uh, great guy. He's at uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce yep. now. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Bill came in and it was, uh, it was a little bit of a switch. Yeah, definitely. So tell us a little bit about the coaching style of Bill Moore. He's uh he's kind of more of an offensive coach. Yeah, he tries to be. Uh huh. Um, great guy. He uh. He always tries to be with you. You know, it's uh, it's huge when you can trust your coach as a friend. Too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he's I, I love the guy. Yeah. He's great. I've seen him stand up for you guys oh, many yeah. times too. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, when I was at the the Ely game at the yeah. beginning of that game, if you got if you remember. I think the the refs kicked like three of your guys off because they didn't have the ear guards. Yeah, or there was what? actually like six of six of them that got kicked off because they had to go put ear guards in. Why were they taking I, the ear guards? I don't know, but uh, uh, I was trying to figure out what was going on from the stands because you know it's not like, it's not like you're at like at an NHL game or something where they're making these announcements. It's all of a sudden like these guys got to walk off the the ice, and then and then. Um, I think it was everybody was just so confused about what was going on. Like Ely scored first, and mm-hmm. we're just like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> you know? just, it caught us off guard. That's for sure. But I was going to say about Coach Bill Moore is that I, when I was in the stands, I was kind of standing, kind of at the 
toward the edge and I and I heard him um, arguing with the uh, ref. Not I mean not not in a disrespectful way, but right. I heard him um, kind of standing up for you guys and mm-hmm. saying that you know these ear guards like nobody's ever called you on it before, nope. but you know it's but, a, this guy was being a stickler about yep, it. Yep, <laughs> yeah, and usually that comes from the coach too. Uh huh. Like I always get in trouble for wearing an illegal mask. Uh huh. And that has to come from the coach. Oh. The refs, the refs talk to me about it, but they don't ever say it. They don't. They can't make me take it off. I think. Yeah. So if the coach says something, then I gotta change it. What's it? Was it doesn't have a neck guard or something? Well, or that too. But yeah. there, it's called a cat eye mm-hmm. mask. So there's like big holes in them. Oh kinda, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just so I can see better, and then I gotta switch it to a flat bar mask. Oh. Just, okay. I don't know. Is it the same helmet, or do you have two yeah. helmets? I have the same helmet. I just, so you just switch the cage. Okay, you take, do that. Quick. Take out a couple of screws and the cat's eye mask. I've seen that. I mean, that's that's a pretty. It's like the classic yep. uh, NHL. Well, I mean, in the NHL, that's that's the one that they're using. Right? Yeah, yeah, yep. What are they afraid that a stick blade could get through? Yeah, or something? a stick or a puck or something. I'm sure if you shot a puck hard enough, it might go through it, but I don't think so. I mean, yeah, like a Dumba slapper yeah. or something, you know, <laughs> might go through. But yeah. If you try to fix, if you just try to push a puck through, oh, you'd probably yeah. be pretty tough. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then um, of course in the last game, which was that we were just talking about that before we started here about that disappointing loss uh, to Greenway. Um, where uh, Coach Moore was, uh, again, kind of advocating for you guys and wound up getting another penalty out yep. of it. But still, I mean, it's it's you're going to war with him. And, yep. you you know, he's got a um, – I mean, it sounds like he commands the respect of the soldiers, which he is does. really great. He does. I You know, I interviewed him on this podcast too, and he had, you know, a lot of really good sort of life advice and stuff like that that he was uh, talking about. So has he ever kind of given you anything that stuck out? Yeah, he. Uh, I don't know about sticking out, but mm-hmm. you know, just basically making the best of yourself. Yeah. Um, do what you want. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, you started the season where everybody was uh, concerned about that injury that you had, yep. um, and it was. I think it was an Achilles or or something like that. Um, it was my some ligament in my ankle. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was, and everybody was co- really concerned because they were like, "Well, there doesn't seem to be another goalie on this yeah, roster." There wasn't. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't. Yeah, um, but uh, you were able to get back from that injury. I think after what was it, it the was fourth game that you started? Four or five games. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, tell us kind of how that came about and and sort of what you did to to accelerate your recovery for that. Yeah, that uh, well, it happened in Simley. Yep. And then I tried to get on the ice for the next game of the tournament, mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't skate. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was bad. And then we got back to Park Rapids, and I went in, and they did x-rays and MRIs and all that kind of stuff. And then the MRIs said that I have a couple of torn ligaments in my ankle. Yep. And I can't play until the, you know they clear me. So then I started going to PT three, two times a week, yep. two, three times a Where'd week. Where'd you do that? It just didn't hear Park Rapids. Mm-hmm. And then uh, soon enough, after doing all of the exercises and all that kind of stuff, I was, I was back. Yeah, yeah. That mu- I mean, it must have been real disappointing at the start of the season oh, for that to happen, right? Well, and even before that, mm-hmm. we started having captain's practice. Yep. But I had a shoulder injury in football this year. Ah, oh, okay. And uh, tore my labrum. Post labrum yep. and part of my AC joint. <laughs> probably Coach Bumar was probably like, "What are you doing playing <laughs> yeah. football, man? You're yeah. a goalie." <laughs> he was pretty angry. <laughs> and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I got back from that too. Uh-huh. So, so you, a couple of setbacks, but uh, fortunately for everybody, you you were back for, for the fourth or fifth game and kind of steadied the the ship. Yeah, because I mean, the, the first few games there was. It's a little touch and go. I mean, I remember going to one game where it, you know, and and what was the what was the uh, the uh, the the boy the 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 guy's name that was that stood Trev- in Trevor Lobeck. Trevor Lobeck, yeah. Yep. And I remember thinking to myself that that Trevor Lobeck, it took a lot of guts to yeah. do what he did. Yeah. Because I I sh- I sure wouldn't be volunteering to be to having pucks flying at me right. like that if I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But um, so I was like, you know, it was commendable what he did. I yeah. thought it was great. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a big. Uh, he stood up and he. Mm-hmm. That's that's part of that's another thing of leadership. Were you yeah, were yeah. you trying to give him some advice about? I tried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's kind of hard if you're put in that situation to even take any advice. Yeah. So, 
But you know, I thought it was it was cool what Trevor did was that, you know, somebody asked him to do something. And even though maybe he, he knew that he wasn't, you know, completely up to it, and he certainly wasn't going to fill your shoes, just the fact that he said yes, I mean, yeah. that's a, there's a lesson right there. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Because a lot of people probably would just be like, you know, gee, not me. I'm yeah, not good I'm enough. Not I can't it. I can't follow up with what Sawyer did. And, you know, I'm, I don't want to be the center of attention in a negative way. But, but look, somebody had to do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and Trevor did it, and I'm super proud of him for doing it. And... Yep. That's that helped a lot, and I think he even won a game, didn't he? He did. Yes, yeah. he won two games. Was it two? Yeah. He got a shutout too. He did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. um, but yeah, I mean, I just that 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 first game was just sort of like, oh boy, you know, we're you know, I think it was eight goals or something mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, yeah, it's tough to be in the line of fire, as you know. Yeah. Um. So uh, we touched on it, Kitson County, and then. Um, I don't want to assume anything because, of course, assuming is always a bad idea. But uh, you guys did play War Road last year. Yep, and, and the year before that, and the year before that yeah. in sectional. So it always seems like it's a, it's a, it's a challenge that you have to stand up to. And of course, last year, War Road had the the historic uh, all time leading scorer ever on that team, yeah. and Jason Shagabe. And then they, yeah, they had that Hampton. Solovowski. And yeah, and was he a goalie? goalie. Yeah, yeah, he was a good goalie too, yeah. wasn't he? Yep. Yeah. But uh and now I think they're led by Carson Pilgrim if I'm not. And is he from Park Rapids? Yeah, he actually is. Did you ever play with him? Uh I don't think I ever played any hockey with him, but uh-huh. he would uh when he moved up to War Road, he'd always come back down and play baseball with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cuz yeah. his, his dad lived down here. All right. And his mom lived up there. So you're a baseball player too then? Yep. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. What position do you play in baseball? Uh, third base or catcher. Uh, okay. And pitcher. I was going to say goalie and catcher kind of seem like it would go the same because yeah. the, the catcher's equipment is, you know, the catcher's equipment, they call that the tools of ignorance. Have you heard yeah. that before? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so getting back to War Road, um, going up to their arena, they just had the hockey day uh Minnesota up there and you know featured on on you know all you know television and everything yeah. else like that how do you go into a place like that knowing that the opposition's going to be pretty tough how do you go into that with the open mind and the mindset that hey you know um we can uh, we can win this game um you just I don't know you just got to believe in it um, yeah we know it's gonna be tough mm-hmm. we haven't played a team at that skill level yet but I definitely think this crew's got it this year. Yeah. If they can if we can do some damage. Yep. And to me, what I've seen a lot, I think, with um as the season's gone on for Park Rapids is that they've become more of a tighter checking team. Mm-hmm. You know. I've seen a lot of really good uh plays where they're playing the body, you yep. know. And it's, that's always a tough choice because I think that, you know, play you, you can overplay the body too. Yeah, you can. Absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, it's making those choices, especially as a senior uh, defenseman that, uh, I mean, and, and, and I'm sure you're you're glad when they make those yeah. right choices or they yeah. play with the stick or the body. But, um, but I mean, really with a team like War Road, you figure they're going to have speed. Yep. And so you got to figure out a way to get between them and, and the net. Absolutely. Um, on defense and, yep. and then back checking. Yeah, that's going to be a huge part. <laughs> so you guys better eat a lot of dominoes yeah. before that game, but uh, yeah. or maybe try something else. Yeah. Maybe, maybe have a maybe. Uh, you know get some meatloaf or something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little more nutrition in yeah. it. Yeah, or drink a you know a energy drink or something before yeah. the game, or at least yeah. have your forwards do that. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not you, but <laughs> you shouldn't break up your routine. Yeah. Um, but that'll be, I mean, it's exciting and it's always fun, I think, probably to get into a game like that where you're probably going to play, you know, I mean, the, it, it, I mean, let's face it, if they win the game, they're probably going to go to state. Yep. If you win the game, you're probably going to yep. go to state. So, um, yeah. well, it also sounds like East Grand's a pretty good, pretty big competitor this year. I heard that East Grand was pretty good now, yeah. too. They so, never used to be, but, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, I, I tell you, like, when I was no, I'm I'm really dating myself here. But when I was in <laughs> elementary school uh, down in Stillwater, the hockey tournament was a big deal. I mean, it still is, yeah. but it was a huge deal. So, because uh, it always starts on a Thursday, yep. and um, basically our teacher, my teacher, 
uh, Mr. Jordan would uh, basically wheel a TV into the into the classroom. And basically, all we would do for the whole day is watch the state high school hockey yeah, tournament. That's sweet. And I wish it, they would do that now. I know. Well, I I do that now, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> but I'm not in a classroom anymore. Yeah. But um, actually, I just I just uh, put my name in for you can get you can get on a list for um, like lifetime season tickets to the high school hockey really? tournament. Really? But it's a ten year wait list. I just realized. Holy. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. But I hope. But I mean, hope I hope I live another ten years and yeah. then I'll get it. Yeah. But um, no. But back then though, it was uh, th- the thing was different. Is that there was only one class. Yep. And so, I mean, I remember even one year there was Greenway um, yep. came went down there and their athletic director is a guy by the name of Kendra Nander. Now he was a star for that team really? that that made it down to state. And I think they may have even got to the semifinals and then lost to, you know, big school down there like Bloomington Jefferson or something like that. But, but it was always a lot of fun to see the teams like War Road or Rozo um, go down there and really, you know, mix it up with the Dinas and, yeah. you know, like the, the big boys the big, and all that. The big two-way schools. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I kind of still wish it was like that yeah. in some ways. Cause I just, there's a different, it's a different brand of hockey. Like, do you notice there being a difference between the, the teams from up North and, you know, playing the teams from the Metro and stuff like that? Kind of. Mm-hmm. I mean, not really. Yeah. It's all, I, I guess we just have a pretty similar schedule. Mm-hmm. Everybody's kind of got the same um, skill level. Yep. Kind of, yeah. not really, but. Yeah. Um, well, when you, when you were coming up, what kind of, did you go to like hockey camp in the summers and stuff uh, like I went that to, too? I would always go to a few hockey camps in the summer, um, playing on teams, travel teams yep. and that kind of stuff. That mm-hmm. was always fun. Which, what were some of the hockey camps you went to? Oh, I don't even know what they were called. Yeah. They have them like at the different uh, colleges and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, or mm-hmm. they would just have them in Fargo or. Oh, okay. Um, I think I went to one in Bemidji. Yep. Yeah, um, there's a big one in Bemidji. Yep. 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 Um, okay, and then um, as far as uh, next year, um, who's going to be the goalie next year? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to say maybe Trevor. Okay. But uh, I heard there is a goalie coming from Walker next year. Oh. So that'll be interesting to Freshman? see. Freshman? I, I don't know. Uh-huh. I haven't heard anything about it. I just heard there's one coming. Okay. Well, that'll be good. Yep. yep. <laughs> they got to have a goalie. Um. Okay. And then as far as you're concerned, you're a senior. Mm-hmm. You plan on graduating in May. Yep. I would assume. Yep. yep. Um. And so what are your, I, I, well, it was senior night <laughs> and it said that your, that your plan was to become a neurosurgeon, which yeah, is, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty big, s- steady hand and a big brain, I suppose. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I do not plan on becoming a neurosurgeon. <laughs> oh, is that some kind <laughs> that of a was, joke? Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of been the joke in the locker room. Uh huh. Cause I, I don't know what I want to do after high school. I okay. plan on playing hockey. Oh, you do? But I don't know where. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the joke in the locker room was just that I was going to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to put it down. Um, has uh, has Coach Moore um, helped you out at all? In, Absolutely. In looking for different college programs yeah. where you might be a good fit? Yep. He's mm-hmm. been helping me out a lot. With all that kind of stuff. So what, what um, you know, like what kind of programs are you looking at for that? Uh, I'm kind of looking at a juniors team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what level or yep. where or anything. Mm-hmm. Just uh, a juniors team somewhere. Okay. And kind of get ready for, you know, maybe playing college or maybe yep. just stay, sticking with the juniors. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose like being a goalie is sort of like being a catcher in baseball, which is that it's probably easier to get to you know, to actually play at the next level as a goalie than it is to be a position player because there's just yeah. so many more position players. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that was another thing why I wanted to be a goalie was mm-hmm. you only have to beat out you have to beat out less goalies than there are players. Yep. So mm-hmm. beating them out would be easier. But yeah. Um. And so you're going to continue to train then in the summer yep. and yep. and and get into a, a, a junior situation and yep. everything like that. Hopefully. You have to uh, let Coach Moore know so that we can continue to follow you once you get into the next level. Cause yeah. Because that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so the last thing I wanted to really talk about was this idea of leadership because you're a cap- you're captain of the team and yep. all that. And um, I've been looking at this book recently, um, helping actually a, a, another uh, high school student who – 
says he wants to be a lawyer, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, says so that's what I am. So yeah. Um, when when I I uh, suggested that we go over the book How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, okay. um, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a book that's that's gonna help make you successful in business and life. Yeah. But what the third part of the book has to do with leadership and. He says that leadership is um, a lot of it has to do with improving um, other people's behavior and attitudes, you know. Yeah. So um, I guess that would mean if if you know people are getting down or you know people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing or you know you you, you want to get everybody on the same page so that you can move forward. And yeah, all it's that definitely stuff. a huge thing. Yeah. Is uh, yeah when people are getting down, you you have to be the one that brings them back up. You yeah. have to be the positive one. Otherwise, it's just nobody's going to get up. Because nobody, yeah, because if it's not you, then it's nobody else, exactly. right? Exactly. You know the, how it's been. But. The buck stops with you. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, some of these some of these things that these pieces of advice that he gives, um, I think are pretty good. But, you know, when he, he talks about, like, for instance, that when you're going to talk to somebody who's, let's let's say, maybe has a bad attitude or you know, isn't performing the way that you'd want him to, that you begin with, um, you know, praise and honest appreciation, you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you do. Yeah, because yeah. it, you know, it doesn't really help to to start out by being like, you know, what are you doing on this plate? Like, do you guys watch film and stuff mm-hmm. like that too? All the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, rather than just being like, uh, hey, you fell down on this play or, or you know, you, you're out of position here or something like that that's going to get the guy thinking negatively first. Yeah. I think what he's saying is like, hey, listen, you did this well. Yeah, exactly. You got to start off positive. You got to, yeah. even when you're talking to somebody with a negative attitude, you got to, I've always found if you are kind of like, you have to like agree with the person and then they'll start to respect your decision. Hmm. What do you if mean by that? that makes any sense. Yeah, no, give me give me an like, example. Uh, I don't know, saying we're I can't even think of any right now. Like somebody thinks we're gonna lose the game. Yeah. You have to start off kind of agreeing with them, letting uh-huh. them know that I get where you're coming from. Yeah. But that's not gonna happen. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I think that's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, like one of these, one of his things there is he says is ask questions instead of giving orders. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so, um, you know, if a person's real negative, you know, you could say, okay, you know, I, I understand that. Um, but, you know, like, what do you think that we could do to, uh, to try to improve our situation? Yeah. Here? Yep. You know, exactly. Like not just being like, you do this or you do that or you, you know, yeah. hustle. The, kid, the kids don't like that. No, I don't like getting yelled at. Nobody does. No. That's not just kids. Yeah. It's everybody. You know, <laughs> yeah. in life. Um, so another thing he says is that you call attention to other people's mistakes, but indirectly. Yep. You know, so you don't just call somebody out and and uh, you know make them look like a fool in front of everybody. Absolutely. You, know? you call the whole team out. You call the whole team out, yep. and and so. And then, right, exactly. Yep. So then if a person did make the mistake, they called the whole team out so they kind of feel like they're not being singled out. Right. But uh, but they're also getting the message. Yep, exactly. Because <laughs> you got to give them the message yeah. too, right? somehow you got to get them the message. Um, another one that you probably have done, in, you know, even inadvertently, is, is uh, talking about your own mistakes before before criticizing the other person. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably one of the the ways I start off uh-huh. when I'm, you know, kind of inferring to someone what, what they did wrong or whatever. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Cause that, that's just another way of kind of getting them to, you know, not look at this as like you're, you're chewing them out or yep. something, you know? Exactly. It's like, he's no better than me or, you know, he's not trying to say he's better than me. Yeah. He's basically, he makes mistakes too. So we're yep. kind of all in this together. Exactly. Um, also praising the the slightest improvement, even a small improvement, and then also praise every improvement. So if yeah. somebody does it the better, you know, mm-hmm. the next time, make sure you say, hey, you know, good job that yeah. time, right? Glad you're here. Yeah, <laughs> doing good now. <laughs> um, using encouragement, um, you know, um, 
making the other person happy about doing the thing that you're suggesting. I mean, these are all just kind of ways that you can get people to feel good about themselves and sort of empower them to do better, yeah, you know, as a absolutely. whole. Absolutely. And then as a leader, I mean, it's not really your job to, to, uh, uh, design, you know, to, to call plays or say, this is how we're going to do the breakout and all that stuff. I mean, that's for the, that's for coach Bill yeah. Moore, but as the captain, I kind of have to enforce it. You have to enforce almost. it, but then you're also kind of more or less you and, and, um, and, uh, the other captains are also kind of responsible for morale Yep. on the team. And Absolutely. Everything, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. So can you think? Can you think of a time when morale was sort of low and and you guys uh, had to kind of dig yourselves out of a hole? Wow, we could just bring that right back to War Road last year. Yeah. Um, coming out after the first period, it was it was tough. Yeah. Nobody really wanted to play. Everybody was kind of a little bit embarrassed, mm -hmm. but you just gotta bring the energy back up. You gotta stay in the game, right? Exactly. Mm hmm. And as a goalie too, I'm sure that you know it. I mean, you, you you do something at the beginning of the game where, like, you, you say to yourself, man, I wish I would have done that differently. Mm -hmm. You have to forget it. You know, yeah. it's it's sort of like if you're, uh, like, a reliever or something in baseball, yeah. you yeah, go out and you, you, know, you throw a pitch and the first swing is a home run. Well, hey, I still got to stay in this and get exactly. three more outs. Yeah, you got to <laughs> have a clear mind. Yeah. That's for sure. Um. So what uh, what are your aside from playing hockey? What are your other plans going forward? Um, I I kind of wanted to go to school to be a structural engineer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably go to like a two year tech college. Yeah. And then go to a two year university. Yep. And um, as far as like you know where you'd want to live, is this the area or not? Not really. I yeah. I would say a little bit bigger in Park Rapids. Okay. Probably like a Bemidji size or something. Okay. A little but, bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not too big, so not yeah. like down in the Twin Cities. Yeah, and all not that like stuff. a cities, but <laughs> <laughs> you like living in Minnesota. I do. That's okay. pretty sweet here. Do you hunt and fish and I all do. that stuff? I yeah. do. Yeah. What are your favorites there to do? Um, I definitely like duck hunting a lot. Oh, that's definitely my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, and then goose hunting. Yep. Deer hunting. Uh, ice fishing. I mm -hmm. love ice fishing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're in the right spot for all <laughs> exactly. Of that, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you get your fish house off the ice already? We did. Yeah, yeah. good. Because I heard it was going to be 50 degrees oh, later yeah. this week. It's going to, it's, the ice is going to be melting. Yeah. Well, uh, Sawyer Torkelson, thank you so much for coming in today. It's been really fun talking to you and getting to know you a little bit. Yeah. And um, just so everybody knows, uh, the game is going to be on Tuesday at 6 p.m. against Kitson County Central. And from there, the sky's the limit. That, exactly. So. Um, everybody, be sure to come out and support the Park Rapids team. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, I really uh, um, admire what you've done here in your career as a hockey goalie, and I wish you the best of luck in, in the future. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank in, you. Sawyer. Absolutely. All right. Oh, one more question. I got to <laughs> ask this before, I, before we end. Uh, they on the, uh, on the mic or on the, uh, inner, what do they call it? The, the PA system at the hockey game, they always come out and say, soy sauce, so Sawyer Torkelson. Yeah, I heard that last time. I was, I was so confused. It just so, comes up with a nickname for Is me. that what they call you in the locker room or uh -huh. no? It's usually Tork or Tommy in the locker room. Tork or Tommy yeah, in the locker room. I don't know where soy sauce comes from. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so has anybody come up to you on the stream and, hey, soy sauce, yeah, how you yeah. doing? Yeah. A lot of the younger kids now call me soy sauce. <laughs> all right, thanks. I yeah. couldn't forget to ask that. Yeah. So, All right, my guest has been Sawyer Torkelson. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay, great.